perhaps the biggest message out there to the autistic community, I, I think we need to start taking ownership of the label, okay. right? Um, it makes no sense to have this label uh, left in the hands of the autism professionals. That's anachronistic uh, from my perspective. Okay, welcome to today's Aspie interview. Today we are joined by Jorn, who has a son on the spectrum and both him and his wife identify as being on the spectrum as well. Uh, he started his own business about 15 years ago or so, mm -hmm. uh, which is now a completely non-hierarchical collaborative venture uh, that has a focus on being um, neuro neurodivergent and neurofriendly and something like that. Anyway, that's enough from me talking for, for, um, for an introduction. Mm -hmm. So thanks for coming along. Oh, thank you, Paul, for <laughs> inviting me to your interview series. Looking forward to the conversation. Uh, so the question I like to start with is, uh, what do you like most about being on the autism spectrum? Mm -hmm. um, well, if you're autistic, um, you tend to uh, be able to, to focus and dive deep into certain uh, subject matters. And I think if I weren't on the spectrum, I wouldn't uh, know nearly as much about the, the things that I've uh, been involved in over the decades. Uh, so just the depth of knowledge that I've been able to accumulate is something that I really uh, value and uh, that I think is actually valued by other people as well, it seems. And what are some of those special interests that you've had? Um, well, uh, I've studied mathematics originally um, and so my uh, deep interests are uh, on the one hand side in conceptual modeling, um, then in the uh, development and use of uh, visual domain specific languages. So that's a very technically sounding topic, but it turns out to be uh, highly uh, relevant if you're dealing with uh, software and data intensive systems. So. Uh, Developing new visual languages is like my bread and butter. New visual languages. Yes. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, over the last uh, decade, uh, since I discovered the autism spectrum, um, uh, you, you could say that uh, human social behavior at all levels of scale has become a special interest. Okay. Um, and what's your, what was your journey to discovering your, your own spectrum yourself? Um, yeah, very interesting question because obviously I'm uh, within an age bracket where autism didn't really exist uh, when I was a little um, child. So, uh, and I, I think uh, you mentioned this in one of your videos. Uh, you, you read uh, Look Me in the Eye. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I read that book when it came out and at the time only a few things registered. Uh, so this wasn't the big eye opener. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, then within I think the next year or so, I um, was surprised by the, the way in which my son insisted on taking very specific trains, even if there would have been an earlier train because we were early enough at the station. So, and then I ended up reading more and I, well, stumbled across the, the autism quotient test and, uh, well, that landed me in the autist, clearly in the autistic uh, territory. Um, and then I, uh, but as of course, this is just an online test, so I've done a lot of reading um, and it became clearer and clearer. Um, but um, I, at the same time, I then became aware of all these negative stereotypes mm. that are out there floating around. And so I didn't see a need for, for any particular labels or also not for a, for a diagnosis. Okay. Um, because, uh, I mean, people uh, who are different in other ways, uh, like uh, gay people, I mean, they don't go to a doctor to be diagnosed, right? Yeah. So just uh, because I've discovered that my cognitive lens differs from uh, the cognitive lens that most people seem to have, or I mean, 
no two cognitive lenses are identical, but if you've got a cognitive lens that's further out uh, from what is considered typical, I mean, that uh, doesn't mean that uh, anything needs to be fixed or changed. I mean, as I was saying earlier, I don't, uh, I think it's a huge advantage to uh, have these divergent cognitive lenses. And uh, actually, if you look uh, across the literature now, even beyond autism, I mm -hmm. mean, this is starting to be recognized now uh, also in the, in the business world. I mean, they're taking baby steps towards uh, neurodiversity, but nevertheless. Uh, Okay, and your son, did you go through that diagnosis process? Um, many, many years later, because again, we didn't see any need to, to uh, uh, subject him to any kind of therapy, because from mm -hmm. our perspective, I mean, he was just the perfect son. Okay. Um, and it's only later uh, where, I think when he started going to secondary school, we just uh, wanted to have uh, an assessment so that in case he needed accommodations mm -hmm. uh, that uh, we can have a no-nonsense discussion yeah. with the, the teachers. Um, and that uh, assessment process was, well, was interesting. It just confirmed uh, uh, what I had suspected about the um, autism industry. Um, so. I don't want to get involved in the autism industry, basically. And um, what uh, has emerged over the last decade, I mean, the more open I became about identifying as autistic, it's turned out that a lot of people in my uh, context also identify in the same way, okay. right? They, in in were, many were cases... They, were they afraid to use that word, though? Um, in some cases, uh, and I can understand this, right? I mean, we are still being uh, discriminated against in the workplace. And I've, uh, I remember, uh, this is seven years ago, I, I, at work, at one of my clients, I uh, saw an incident where someone who was clearly having some autistic behaviors, but yeah. otherwise he was just a, uh, a perfectly competent team member, he got fired on the spot, escorted out of the building. Um, and uh, that's completely ridiculous in this day and age. We shouldn't be seeing something like that. So there's still, I think, in society, there's a long way to go. Say, if we compare uh, the autism spectrum and the level of appreciation within society, we're probably um, 50 years behind what, what's happened with the topics like homosexuality, right? Yeah, okay. Um, and I think, or I hope that over the next uh, few decades that we can make a significant change there. So I'm not interested in changing autistics in any way. I'm interested in changing society. And the way to do so, I think, is, uh, well, by um, collaborating within the uh, autistic community. And, and, and so that's what's, uh, what keeps me going. I mean, this is why we uh, formed a company. Um, and uh, within this company, we've got a wonderful neurodivergent um, team. Um, and uh, I think the reason, well, if you look at what we've achieved and what we can do to clients, this is only because of uh, these different cognitive lenses. So you mentioned uh, collaboration mm -hmm. and it's it's a stereotype that um, people on the spectrum don't have those kind of people skills and might not be so good at mm -hmm. collaboration but that doesn't sound like that's your that's been your experience so. no absolutely not um, I think uh, in terms of uh, collaboration within a group when there's a clear goal there's a distinct autistic advantage okay. yeah I've um, noticed that because of our specific skill sets, um, people on the spectrum tend to be even better in teams because, because if I had to do everything by myself, I, I would struggle with a lot of things. So if I'm in a team, mm -hmm. that's great. I can do my bit really well and then I can say, well, you do that yep. bit. I have no interest in that bit yep. because that's your area and I'm very happy to, mm -hmm. to do that. Yep. I think we are the, the, the born specialists. 
right? So you just heard me uh, state my weird special interests yeah, and yeah, what yeah. I enjoy doing. I mean, there are not that many people out there who do exactly the same thing. So, and there are many, many other things that you need to keep a, a business uh, running and, and, and to, to grow it. And I'm good at some of those things, but there are many other things where I desperately need and where I'm dependent on the help of all the other members in the team. Yeah. And that's great. I, I, I'm grateful for, so for that situation, for that interdependence. It to so, have that level of interdependence. Yes. Yeah. And so this brings us back to the topic of society. I mean, in our society, interdependence is not valued. Instead, I think uh, what society values is this hyper-competitiveness. So, what, so what's the secret to helping a group of people work well together? Um, the secret lies in um, building the team and even the purpose of the organization around the unique, distinct interests and talents of the people that make up that team. Okay. Um, so this comes back to what we were discussing earlier, that you are happy to do those things that you're really good at, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm happy to do the things that I'm really good at. And well, let's just be creative and put these things together and see what we can achieve with them if we combine forces. Of course, everyone has their, their uh, self-interest, but I think what's easy to forget is that, in particular, uh, with uh, autists or Aspies, um, and for that matter, anyone who's intrinsically motivated, mm -hmm. uh, that the self-interest is not necessarily a, a financial one. Okay. Um, and uh, okay. what then becomes important is to design the organization in such a way that this, these intrinsic motivations are not compromised by financial incentives or, or disincentives. So if you make sure that uh, there is zero financial reward for individual performance and that all the financial awards are available for, for group performance, then collaboration happens if you've got, as soon as you have intrinsically motivated people. Another artistic advantage, um, we uh, know exactly what we enjoy. Um, overall, if I look back, I think we are on a very positive trajectory now and only because we've probably ignored all traditional advice on how to form a business and how to run it. Funny. In a traditional Aspie way, ignoring all advice and succeeding anyway. <laughs> so is there anything that, you know, you've got, a, you've got an audience now, is there anything that you wish the world knew about yourself or about autism in general? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I would, again, come back to this topic that um, autists and Aspies uh, actually can be great at teamwork. Um, so we are capable of collaborating towards a shared goal much more effectively than a typical team would. And uh, the more uh, autists or Aspies you have within a team, the easier uh, you can achieve really, really hard goals. I think uh, it place to our advantage that we are not afraid of ignoring norms okay. um, and uh, that we, I think in many cases, don't necessarily care much about what other people think about us, even though I think that must be annotated with a caveat, if you've got an isolated Aspie out there, uh, the world can be extremely cruel and uh, basically beat people down to the point where they uh, are destroyed, where they then start to think that, well, the only way that I'm ever going to survive is by submitting to whatever the insane rules are. So what would your advice be to someone who feels like the world is beating them down and they've got no choice but to um, follow the rules of the, of um, everyone else. I would encourage these people to um, get in touch with other artists to reach out online. Um, 
last year I, I set up a website, Autistic Collaboration, mm -hmm. specifically to, it's, a, it's designed as a, a mutual support network for um, autists and Aspies and uh, what I like to call neurodiventures. So okay. uh, ventures that are predominantly neurodivergent, uh, owned by uh, Aspies and autists. Um, so there is a list, a, currently a small list of these ventures on that website. Uh, I would love to see that list grow and all these people involved are, I think, more than willing to assist others who may find themselves in a difficult spot at the moment. Okay, great. Awesome. Uh, well, thanks, Jan, for joining us today. It was really interesting to hear how um, some traditionally autistic traits can actually be such a big advantage in trying to collaborate together mm -hmm. and do some of those quite innovative mm -hmm. things that you're, that you're pioneering, I would say, in, in your business. Mm -hmm. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed this interview and stay tuned for more Aspie interviews later in the year. Okay, bye. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe for weekly content just like this one. If you'd like to get even more involved, you can join the discussion on social media or support me by becoming a patron. Finally, I value your time and you'll notice all my videos are ad-free, so please help me to cover what you want to hear by leaving me a comment and telling me what you think. So thanks for watching and I'll see you another time.